Well, hi, Dr. Aiden. Hi, Eric Legrand. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am having a wonderful life. And if you don't mind, I'm going to start with the doctor. Give us the medical information that will set the platform for what Eric will talk with us about. Um, basically, we're going to discuss uh, spinal cord injury and the side effect that patients can get of neuropathic pain. Uh, neuropathic pain is a sensation that patients can feel after a trauma to the spinal cord. Um, it's usually described as a sharp, stabbing, burning, tingling sensation, or what we know as nerve pain. Um, and we're going to kind of discuss this, the symptoms that the patient feels and as well as um, how it's treated and managed. Okay, Eric, let's switch to you. You're a former Rutgers football player, you're an author, a sports broadcaster, but tell us what you know about this. Well, in the beginning, I didn't know anything about it, and it was tough because I thought my body was actually coming back. I thought I was going to gain sensation throughout my body again and be able to move, but come to find out, it was nerve pain, and, you know, it was a burning sensation. You know, it wasn't comfortable, but uh, fortunate enough, it went away a few weeks later, but I've seen patients that... It hasn't gone away, and it affects their therapies. It affects their quality of life and their living. So, you know, they, people need to be educated about it and talk to their physician or their specialist so they can come up with certain things for their, for their symptoms that they're having. All right, Dr. Aiden, tell yes. me, uh, he said he didn't even know what this was. Tell me why. So many times it, it's more that we just don't know enough about it um, as a patient or even outside of the medical profession. Um, many times, you know, you hear that someone is paralyzed or has a spinal cord injury and they can't feel anything below their neck or down into their legs. You assume that they don't feel anything, that they don't get movement, that they don't have spasms or twitches. Um, but that's not necessarily true. You have to remember that the body is kind of uh, very fluid and the spinal cord is a cable that goes up to the brain and all the framework is laid down and still present, but there's been a severing or trauma to the level of the spinal cord below that level. So there's going to be a sparking event or like an inflammatory event that could be occurring and those sparks or those flickers are what the patients end up feeling, whether it's a sharp pain, a stabbing pain, electrical pain, or even a twitching or spasm like a movement. And then eventually they may calm down, they may remain, and in Eric's case, they actually went away. Can I ask you before I talk to Eric, does this get diagnosed incorrectly? Because it sounds like other diseases or other problems. Sometimes it can, actually. With... Um, in healthcare, if you don't have a good communication with the doctor or the physician that's treating you, or even your physical therapist, your occupational therapist, your family members, it can go undiagnosed. And, and the problem is, is that if it is undiagnosed, it can actually make you regress in your rehab and your functional gains. So it's really important to discuss symptoms, side effects that you're having, or changes in your function to have these dialogues with your therapist, family members, as well as your spinal cord injury specialist or physical medicine rehab specialist. Eric, and excuse me for not knowing, but did this happen to you after your illustrious football career or during at the time? No, this happened to me after. This was actually a few weeks, probably about a month or so after my injury, month, month and a half, and I started getting the, the feelings. And I, I asked my physician a day or two after I started feeling it because I thought, it was a good thing, so I wanted to see what it was going on, but I've seen cases where people don't ask and they just try to go through it and then it becomes a lot worse. Well, I'm surprised because when you're a professional athlete, you're surrounded by the best medical professionals. Even teams I see have chiropractors and therapists, so it seems like something that could be easily caught for you, but maybe hard to diagnose in someone outside of that arena. Well, yeah, well, mine happened after my spinal cord injury. You know, when you when you're dealing with all the, you know, the great the doctors and the trainers, usually it's about other things, football-related injuries. You know, this is, now this isn't a very common injury in football games. Of course, it happens, but, you know, more you talk about ACL injuries when it comes to football or broken, broken arms or something in football, not really a broken neck or, you know, a fractured vertebrae. So it was something I wasn't educated on at all for going into, the, going into this injury, so I didn't know much about it. Well, thank you so very much for giving us inside personal information. Dr. Legrand, as I wrap up, what do you want us to totally take away from this interview and tell me where my audience can find more information? Well, yeah, I started a foundation, Team Legrand of the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation, 
And uh, people can go to teamlegrand.org to learn more about spinal cord injuries, how to take care of a person with a spinal cord injury, or how to how to live with a spinal cord injury, things to look out for. But also, we're helping try to raise money to find a cure for paralysis one day. So teamlegrand.org if people want to check that out. Well, thank you so very much, Eric Legrand and Dr. Stephen Aiden. I want to thank you so much for giving us an awareness about this. I thank you very much for being on the Valder BB Show. Thank you.